we're going to talk about something that it's it, it's horrible. This story. It's horrible for a whole bunch of reasons. Some of which you could foresee. Some of which you understood, and some of which perhaps you didn't expect. I, I, I hate the story about what happened at Buckingham Palace earlier this week because it does two things to me, and I am a, a very privileged white man. It does two things to me. It reminds me of the second-class citizenship that many black people, many people of colour in this country have inflicted upon them by others, whether they realise the awfulness of what they are doing or not. And we may get on to the difference between people who realise and people who don't a little later in the programme. It reminds me of the... Uh, what would you even call it? Just the, the baked-in bigotries of Britain. And I'm not a victim of it. I just empathise with people who are. I even empathise with the people who've persuaded themselves that they're not bothered by it and it's absolutely fine because it is so normalised and we are so gaslit, even to a point where you've got people of colour in the cabinet claiming that white privilege doesn't exist, something that is palpably ridiculous. I'll give you the best example, the most topical example of how to deal with people claiming that. Show me a white person whose skin colour is brought into the criticism if he misses a penalty while wearing an England shirt. There you go, just a little bit of privilege. And the second reason why it really upsets me, this story, and I hope I'm not being selfish when I say this, is that it reminds me of how effectively racism divides us. Nick had callers today, they're less likely to ring me, I suppose, queuing up to claim that this was no big deal, queuing up to claim that this was not racist at all, or, or it was because of her age, Lady Susan Hussey's age, which may be partly true, but that's an explanation, not an excuse. What's the official age at which you're allowed to be racist? For everyone sort of tweeting, she's 83. Is there an age? Do you get a little badge? You're allowed to be racist now? Well done, you've passed your 70th birthday. You can go up to black women and, and move their hair, touch their hair, so that you can read their name badge and then not believe them when they tell you that they're from London. Is there an age? 70, 75, 60, 65? What age is it at, the, at which you're... I'm, I'm 50 now. Does that mean I've crossed the line? Did I cross the line in January of this year? I can march up to people with darker skin than mine and ask them inappropriate and rude questions? I don't know. But the, that's the second reason, is that it means that we never focus, we never, we never move together. Look at this country. Look at the problems that this country has. They are not caused by black people and they are not actually caused by racists. They are caused by epic inequality. And yet we never focus upon the real problems that we face as a shared population because we're too busy having conversations like this one. And I would rather not be having this conversation because I would rather not live in a world where things like this happened. And if I have to live in a world where things like this happen, I would rather not live in a world where people think there's a debate to be had or a row to be described. And there is. A debate to be had because there are people apparently persuaded that this is not an egregious example of precisely the sort of quiet bigotry that Meghan Markle has been talking about pretty much since the moment she arrived in Britain or arrived in Buckingham Palace.